G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here, wearing my aeroplaneologist's hat. So let's have a talk about a thing called the Carbon Dragon. It was a wonderful thing, designed by an American called Jim Morpin. It was a cross between a sailplane and a hang glider and an ultralight kind of thing. It had a 43 foot wingspan, a fully cantilevered wing, so no wire stru uh, or struts to support it. It had full span flapperons. It would go 25 foot forward for every one foot down that it dropped, it was its lift drag. And the whole floor of the cockpit, it was a closed cockpit machine, the whole floor of the cockpit had a hinge on one side and a catch on the other and you could actually open the bomb bay door and stick your feet out. Not for landing, not for landing. There was a wheel on the bottom of the, the aeroplane on the, the bomb bay door, so to speak. But uh, the idea was that you could take it to a hang gliding competition and you could put it together and you could open the cockpit and you could get your friends to basically lift it up while you stood inside of it, strap yourself into it and then tippy toe to the edge of the cliff and jump off the cliff and you would win the foot launched aerodynamically controlled hang glider section of the competition. You'd get all the ribbons and go home with all the medals because there was nothing else that was half as good as a carbon dragon. So <clears throat> mate of mine got the plans and he started building one. It took him about 5,000 hours. And he got it to the point where he could visualize flying it. So he got me involved and we went out to a unidentified agricultural strip. I'm not gonna tell you where that was. And uh, I towed him behind a car and that worked. And then we went to a place called Inglewood where there was a, a sort of a, a laissez-faire flying every year. And up there, there was a bloke who had an ultralight designed for tow and hang gliders and it flew at the right speed range for this carbon dragon. So old mate got in his carbon dragon that he'd only flown on a rope behind a car and he got aero towed. And as it happened, he also owned one of these ultralights designed for tow and hang gliders. And his ultimate goal was to have somebody like me fly his tug with him in his carbon dragon. He never quite got to that, but we got close. Um, so anyway, he and I got pretty good at towing up hang gliders and, and time moved on. And about 24 years ago, there came a day when another bloke, also lived locally, who had a drifter, decided that it'd be a good idea to stick a tow pole on his drifter and have a go at pulling up a carbon dragon. So we call that the tug master conversion. So let's go and have a bit of a look at um, some pictures of the carbon dragon under construction and some pictures of the best, the best days gliding I've ever had in this part of Australia. Not that I was flying the glider, I was the aero tow launch controller and I had my camera there and my kids were there. Actually, my son went on the test flight of the drifter with the Tugmaster conversion. Six years old and he already racked up his first test flight. So, here he is, old mate flying his tug into my son's third birthday party, actually. This little sequence has taken one week after I crashed my ultralight motor glider, the VJ24W with a 22 horsepower JPX engine while attempting to take off out of that particular paddock in Red Range Village. And of course the tug, whose tail number is covered up with a smiley face, it had no trouble taking off and landing in a 200 yard paddock because it was not an underpowered ultralight motor glider. So anyway, that's what a purpose designed ultralight tug looks like. And this is what a carbon dragon looks like on its trailer behind old mate, the carbon dragon builder with a peace sign over his number plate and a smiley face over his head. So nobody can possibly know who this outlaw is. 
And this is what a carbon dragon looks like. When it's off the trailer, put together, sitting on the ag strip. Over beside the glider highway. And if you were to go there and have a look today from that very same spot, the hills would be covered with windmills spinning in the breeze. And there you see the carbon dragon from the side. And along there is the hinge line. It runs all the way back to the very back of the pod. That's where the cockpit floor comes open. Full span flapperons. As I said, cantilever, no struts, no wires, very smooth, 25 to 1 lift drag, 43 foot wingspan. The most amazing hang glider you've ever seen. Built, as I said, by Mr. Smiley Face in his backyard shed. And there you can see the 132nd inch three ply, which covers the leading edge from the top of the wing spar to the bottom of the wing spar making it a very strong D-section box. They call this thing the Carbon Dragon because there's quite a lot of Carbon Dragon employed in the construction. You can see it in there on the bell cranks and uh, the entire whoopsie, entire tail boom is carbon fibre made by moulding it over a mylar mould you can see a black line running along that bit of wood. A lot of the uh, carbon fibre is doing the load bearing. And the thing is, it's too thin to be able to work with to stick it together. So they put the, well, he put the carbon fibre into the wood, as Jim Morton suggested in the plans. This cockpit frame plywood on either side of a very very thin bit of carbon fiber it's kind of difficult to see on the phone screen I'm hoping that it's going to come out in the finished video it shows up particularly well in these shots of the zigzag diagonal ribs in the full span flapperons this is quarter inch by quarter inch spruce with a 1 16th of an inch groove routed up the center of the wood turning it into a u-shape of spruce then the resin is placed into the groove and the wood with the resin in it is placed on a table underneath a piece of carbon fiber string that's stretched tight between two nails and then you just slide the carbon fiber down the nails into the groove wipe away the excess wait for it to cure and then you take all that carbon reinforced spruce and you cut it all up and you glue it all together as wing ribs did i mention it took him five thousand hours to build this thing phenomenal amount of work And to keep the ribs in the tail right, they too are all made with that same carbon fibre sandwich technique. What you've got is wood on either side of carbon fibre and then cut the wood up. And 132nd inch three ply on the leading edges and the trailing edges. just a mind-boggling amount of work and when he started there were no ultralight glider tugs so he was actually planning on taking this thing to the hang gliding competitions jumping off the cliff closing the Bombay door winning the competition and then landing somewhere below on a beach but then the tug was invented and so 
back to the story that the unnamed, unidentified agricultural strip aerodrome where the word had got around that something unusual was about to go down. Not only did the cows come along to have a look, Piper Cherokee dropped in. And then the farmer in the next paddock who had been busy making tractor eggs, he went and jumped into his drifter with which he'd flown to work. And he came over. and landed his stock standard drifter, two seat ANO 95.25 ultralight. And then from the west, from Inverell, there came this bloke in what he said he calls a shifter because he went to an air show with a tape measure and he walked around a drifter and he took down some notes and he went home and he shifted a few things around and this is what he came up with. And because I'm not seeing any registration numbers on the shifter, I think I better put his face behind a smiley star as well. And so, the tow pole was fitted onto the drifter to enable it with a tow release on the tail wheel to be able to pull through the centre of the crankshaft or the gearbox drive shaft to the propeller. You just sort of see it there, there's bracing wires running from the top of the tow post to the wings and uh, yeah it means that you can pull through the center line of the propeller and transfer the load to the airframe while aero towing gliders it's called a tug mask conversion as far as we know it's the only drifter that's ever towed up a glider there's my son aged six he actually went on the test flight of the Tugmaster. While his sister, aged five, watched. Pilot of the Cherokee, builder of the Carbon Dragon, pilot of the Drifter with Tugmaster conversion. And there we go. A lot of telephoto foreshortening going on here but anyway what it turned out was that the ultralight federation refused to have anything to do with ultralight sailplanes because they didn't have a motor the hang gliding federation they said they didn't want to know anything at all about carbon dragons that were being aero tow launched they were only prepared to talk about them or register them or administer them if they were being foot launched although they could land on their wheel and the Gliding Federation of Australia, they said, well, it doesn't weigh over a thousand pounds. It's not VH registered and it's too light to be able to fly behind the tugs that we use. So the GFA didn't want to know. The Hang Gliding Federation said they didn't want to know unless you actually took off with it on your feet. The Ultralight Federation said it hasn't got any motor. So they didn't want to know. So the Civil Aviation Safety Authority said there's nobody to administer these things. So, therefore, it's against the law to play with them. They are outlawed. And eventually, the Ultralight Federation of Australia became absorbed by the Recreational Aircraft of Australia Association. Perhaps it's administration. Ah, Triple A, they call themselves. They were no more interested in ultralight sailplanes than than were the AUF, the GFA, or the HGFA. So this day I'm showing you here back in 1997, perhaps 96, but I think it was 97, that's pretty much the only time that a carbon dragon has ever been aero towed in this particular neck of the woods. And it's, as far as I know, the only time a drifter has ever been used as a glider tug. And then, Carbon Dragon came in and landed. The mystery Cherokee went home. Old mate got into his shifter and showed off his climb rate. Which is pretty good. And the Carbon Dragon, after that one fly in its home region, 
was packed up and put back on its trailer and as far as I know it has never ever flown again. Thanks to the tireless efforts of the bureaucratic microbes who make their living trying to prevent aircraft accidents by preventing anybody from ever getting into the sky. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.